Well, hi guys, uh, welcome to the Hayden Show. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to make a joke, but a little joke. Oh, I've got a wrong one because I'm so traumatized for what we just watched. Like, my God, I, I can't get my head around it. We just watched uh, the Scooby Doo Guess Who um, episode with uh, Weird Al, and my God, I, I just I can't quantify what the fuck I've just seen. <laughs> Basically, picture a classic like um, Scooby Doo, where are you? Episode. But more modernized, uh, modernized like um, version of it, like the same kind of like animation, just drawn nicely. And then you get Weird Al start singing randomly at parts, and then accordions, and two dinosaurs pop up, and then Fred duplicates and comes Canadian. It's really weird. That's only the hard <laughs> um, but I, I, the, the show itself, or every episode is a cameo from a famous person. Yes. I'd, I'd look into um, what some episodes are. We, uh, you, di- you didn't tell me there's, there's a Steve Buscemi episode, a Mark Hamill episode. And I, don't I, don't know why. I don't think I've seen the Buscemi one. No, I've seen the Steve Buscemi. I haven't I seen that one. It. I've seen the uh, Ricky Gervais one. The Ricky Gervais one. There's, there's a Batman, Batman one. Wonder Woman Flash. Wonder Woman Flash, yeah, yeah. Sherlock Abraham Lincoln. In the second series, there's a Morgan Freeman. I've seen the uh, Whoopi Goldberg one. She runs yeah, like a seance. I don't know why, but Sia. Yeah, I've seen that one. Uh, yeah, fucking. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's Steve Buscemi, yeah. And it's apparently. Um, the, the, the actual villain apparently was his nan. I need to watch that. I, I, I need to watch that one. Steve Buscemi. Um, the Hex Girls are one of them. Yeah, no, classic. Right. You've got to bring them back, don't you? Yeah, so Morgan Freeman's in the second series. Gigi Hadid. Why? I don't know. There's a lot of people I have no idea who they are. I've seen, I've seen I, think the yeah. first, I think the first series I've seen. But I mean, See, this, this I one... Did, I just picked a random one. I picked Weird Al just because we made a Weird Al joke not long ago. So I picked Weird Al for an epi- the episode. Genuinely, I didn't know this existed. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like it's after the, in my opinion, fuck up with her that uh, B call scooter, whatever it fucking was, that weird one. They basically went back to basics and uh, decided to do, like what they used to do back in the day, where they just did cameo uh, shows, which was back in the day was they did like Batman and Robin, like this Adam West Batman. Uh, and I did a few others like uh, Palm Club Trotters. So they went back to basically that idea as a series, though. To be fair, like if it was like a generic, like if they went like to a generic Scooby Doo series about the celebrities, honestly, I think it's been really fucking good because like, I like the fact that it's the classic art style just like revamped. I like the look of it, like even like the way like. The hair goes all spiky, or the way Shaggy runs. Yeah. Also, the fact that it's Matthew Lard. You, you fucking everyone loves Matthew. You know? That is like the best Shaggy. You can't, you can't, you can't argue that. And it was nice to see to hear his voice after that shit film. And goes, oh, we're not going to use him. Yeah. That's all. But yeah, I definitely really like it was crazy i didn't get what, what was going on but it was funny <laughs> it was fun I, mean, I definitely if you'd like the classic scooby-doo i think you'd enjoy it because it's got that feel it feels like a classic episode yeah the only, like the only thing i hate with this like series in general is that every time they meet the famous person i was like oh it's and they literally the all the yes. time say like oh it's it's writer comedian direct the blah 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 and then suddenly and i'm just like yeah that uh, did you have to explain that cringy. that to be fair i think they have to because it's a kid show what kid knows who these people are the thing is though i think they could do that it's obviously you know, before it even comes on it's so it's, it's the intro and he says oh it's weird al yankovic i feel like then they could have done all that instead of in the actual episode they're going oh wait that's weird al yeah. that's like they could have switched it around the basic oh it's this guy in the actual episode but the intro i have yeah. the full length 
Oh, it's oh. Uh, musician, whatever, yeah. uh, with Al Yankovic. Or they're going to have, like, because obviously Shaggy is obviously a fan. Like, oh my God, Weird Al, I love, I love your songs. Yeah. Your accordion playing is amazing. That kind of thing would work. Instead of just going, oh, it's singer songwriter, Weird Al. Like, there's come one, on. There's that, one that's, that's like. like Super long. I don't know. I can't remember who it is, but there's one that's that, fucking really. That long. would be. That would be funny. I can see why that would be funny. There's one where there's but, like name dropping everything that they've like every yeah. other profession. Like, writer, comedian, director, actor, song. Like, there's like a. It's a really <laughs> fucking long one. I can't remember who it was, but it's like a really yeah. long one. That it's like, and they say the name. It's like, hey guys. <laughs> that would be funny, but like I said. They could have just a bit like because obviously they do this whole thing of Shaggy being this pro accordion player, like, so really it would make sense that he's a fan of Weird Al and would say not doing like a generic like a uh, fucking late night show host going. And our next guest is singer songwriter. You know I mean, it, I like the idea of acting like a fan instead of acting yeah. like a script. But apart from that, it was quite good. And even though. It was quite jarring seeing like Weird Al, like, hearing his voice acting, and like, but it, I don't know why, but it kind of worked. <laughs> Who was there? <laughs> like, it's you know, it doesn't feel right, but it does at the same time. And yeah, it was quite interesting. Definitely, if you want to experience the craziness that I've experienced by watching it. Give that a look. It's just how he just no, so. like, cracks into song every five minutes. <laughs> oh, this is like good <laughs> running music. Oh, running, running. <laughs> I love the reaction. No, please don't do that. I'll pop it. Shaggy and Skibby are loving it. Yeah, I love that one. We'll go back to camp and everyone's just like down in the dumps and Shaggy and Skibby just enjoying this song. And he's like, let's go to bed. Let's like, oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> I love how he's got like this whole like trap rigged up. For the, the parents, if they run away during the accordion sessions <laughs> he pulls like an entire like dam to explode i don't know why he said explode he just lifted the doors up <laughs> i was expecting like a big though. explosion <laughs> yeah to be fair though that made me realize something as well they've taken some aspects from like uh mystery inc the mission Incorpor- incorporated like the show that they did they took aspects fred's character because he like in that show fred was obsessed to traps there's like a joke they had running. I like how they kept that in the show, in this version as well. It like, feels like, to, to talk about, oh, I love traps to fight. That. that was quite fun. I think was, mm. I'd, I'd say for this episode, though, they took some inspiration from the, I think it's the Phantom Saw uh, movie. Yeah. Because obviously dinosaur based. Yeah, they just took, they took a lot of inspiration from other, like, from films and shows. Like, even that one, um, that one episode of What Do Scooby Do? Yes. There was a, a big T-Rex, wasn't it? I remember that. We took his from from that as well. I saw some like, little things. And if... Oh, no, she's muted now. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it turns out I was leaning on the, um, <laughs> the little jack. And oh, the... I was watching you going... <laughs> But yeah, as I was saying, it's, it does feel like a generic episode of Scooby-Doo, but you got to love a generic episode of Scooby-Doo, you know what I mean? Fair, one of those ones where it doesn't matter how generic it is, you just got to sit down and watch it. And the entire series the is very generic episodes. The only difference is there's a famous person each time. That's it. Yeah, but that is basically Scooby-Doo yeah. anyways. It's one of those ones where the formula, it works. It can get stale. That's when you've got, like, the one that's mixed up a bit, like the classic, like, um, Mission Incorporated. That mixed up a lot, but felt good. And it was enjoyable. To, it was definitely very fun to watch. So that's, the, that's the thing with this, obviously, series in general. Uh, it's fun to see uh, like these big-name celebrities and characters in these weird situations you'd never seen them before. Like, like when are you ever going to see Weird Al in, like, a fucking accordion camp with that creepy-ass sign? To be fair, I would see him doing that. Yeah, actually, no. I think <laughs> I could, I, if Weird Al would do it, I could see him actually doing it in real life. But, I, I mean, think he'd say, he's got weird in his name. But I mean, like, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Ricky Gervais has uh, got like some 
ornament that's like haunted and he, he's only brought it for his cat. So his cat hates him. <laughs> to be fair, I could see why his cat would hate Ricky Gervais. Now that I'm thinking about it, I can also see that. <laughs> um, trying to figure another example. Mark Hamill with a samurai sword trying to stop a giant <laughs> Japanese cat. <laughs> Again, I can see that happening is Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah, like to have a battle at the end of that episode, so yes, I can see that happening. <laughs> That's a good episode, that uh, is. Definitely, I do want to see some more of these, because like, they seem quite fun. Like, as I said, it's not exactly like compelling storytelling, but it's not even a little bit of like yeah. sitting down, watch that escapism. I'm so excited to say... So you had all the old ones, which are very, very nostalgic. Then you had what's what his Scooby? Yeah, uh, uh, and very dated now, really. Yeah, very. Uh, and you then got what's his Scooby Doo, which is a classic. Classic. Then you got Mystery Love Incorporated, that. which went to the darker tone, which is like the best. Yeah, it's fun. It's really good to watch, but like, it you have to be invested in the story to watch it because obviously, it's it's not yeah. like a um, episode. It's not like oh, uh, this episode does not affect the other episode. You- it's like, the plots story. within the episodes are like their own things, but there's like an overall yeah. story arc. Rocks. But yeah. I, think, I think there was uh, uh, Shaggy Scooby to get a clue in between those two coming out. Yeah, that was in between. that was fucking classic. I remember that. That was so fun. And that was in between watching the Scooby Doo ending. In yes, Corporate it was Doom. after watching Scooby Doo. I remember it, and then that came on, and then the machine Corporate. And then obviously so that, that, that was fuck right. up where. As usual, they go too kiddie with the be cool Scooby Doo, which they did basically. They basically did what Ben Ten and that eventually did. They went the art really, style was yeah, awful the, and the plots were basically crap. And then obviously, Dad, Dad just put me off like the, t- the TV shows. I watched the movies, but it put me off like the shows itself. But then this obviously picks it up a bit more because obviously it's different, something different each time. It's a different celebrity guest each time. It's seeing these celebrities in different situations, like Steve Buscemi doing whatever he's doing with his nan. <laughs> So it's sort of doing chipmunks as well. Apparently he's got he's got a fear of chipmunks. I've never got to watch that episode. <laughs> oh, no, yes, I have. oh but it's I think it shows a lot of potential to what they could do if they keep on with the whole like updating the old art style, going with that kind of formula and bringing that back again. Eventually yeah, that will get stale. But they could always just like re- revamp with different like, ideas. Like, like it did with Mystery Incorporated and Technically yeah. speaking, uh, Shaggy Scooby Doo Get a Clue, those two are big revamps. So obviously, Shaggy Scooby Doo Get a Clue was sort of kind of like uh, for, uh, the 13 Ghosts Scooby Doo. It was like their own show. Even the the one where they did be uh, Scrappy, it was just three of them. But it's that sort of their own show. They did their own thing. And then obviously, they did the, the big group one. And then obviously, that was all revamped, darker. It was a much better like, storytelling. It was oh that God, sort it's of thing. It's, quite, like, it's one of the most compelling fucking. Like, Show I think Cartoon Eric have done like genuinely speaking that good. It's just, it's just the thing though because it's easy. It's easy enough to like do you know, I say these, these sort of ones like this episode, uh, this show, uh, it's sort of basic yeah. back to formula thing. And then obviously when that gets a bit too much, people are like mm, I'm, I'm having enough of this now. Then try something different. Obviously that's what they try to do a bit. Uh, be cool Scooby Doo. Fair enough. They try something yeah. different. They try to like, yeah. a- a- address to what it actually used to be, which is a kids show. Especially after uh, Mystery mm-hmm. Corporate, which wasn't very kids like <laughs> times. It tried to address the kids' side of it, which for me it was a failure. For you, it was a failure. Yeah. Obviously, it was a, it was a a gamble, which I think slightly didn't paid pay off, off for them uh. in terms of uh, viewership, but in terms of us, it didn't pay off. So mm. it makes sense they going fun. back to something more basic, more formulaic, and then if there's if you had enough of that, mm. then try something adventurous again. Like I don't know, do a. A show it's a Shaggy, Scooby, and Velma because you had one with Daphne, but do one yeah. with just like other characters or even Fred get Fred involved. The the lads do a lad, do a lad or, series, or, or, or maybe maybe purely a Fred solo film or a solo series. Yeah, a solo series with Fred. It's all about him going to trap conventions, and he has to trap different monsters <laughs> each convention. Yeah, perfect. That that sounds <laughs> perfect. But yeah, this, 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 is, this is like. This is your classic Scooby Doo based this episode is. Yeah, this is. But, like, I like that because it's been such a long time since we've watched any of those. And it's one that's quite easy to watch. So, as I said, like, I struggle sometimes with old animation. It hurts my eyes. But the fact that I can still, like, get the nostalgia 
from watching this more updated version. Perfect. It's a chef's kiss. And as you know, I do love my Scooby Doo. That you do, that I you do. do. Anyway, I do. What's your verdict on this one? Uh, it's definitely the most craziest fucking shit I've watched during this entire like series that we've done so far. But it was fucking fun. It was entertaining to watch. Uh, and I'm also like, I want to watch some of the other ones. To sing it. I, reckon, not, not all I recommend of them the Mark Hamill one. I recommend that But one. the Mark Hamill and the St- Sleeper Shemmy and the Morgan Freeman one, I want to watch. I recommend also, the like, uh, Whoopi Goldberg one. That DC, was all right. Yeah. I want to watch the DC ones as well because they sound quite cool. Uh, DC characters. Batman was interesting. Quite... Flash, I think Flash is probably the most unique one. Yeah. I, I saw it had Trapster in it. Yeah. And the Trapster, Trickster, Trickster. Trapster's fucking Marvel. <laughs> it got Trickster in it. So that, that'd be quite fun to watch. Um, I'd say I want to watch the Hex Girl ones because. Yeah. Come on, they yeah. They were perfect in that. Uh, I'd say Ricky Gervais one as well. I recommend that one. Mm. Yeah, I do want to. I want to watch the rest of one. So it's definitely quite good there. And I think if I were to rate it, I would give it a an eighty one out of a hundred. You made my job easier because I already forgot the, what you gave for the kids next door. Because I know you gave it seven. Just <laughs> I've already forgot the number exactly. But you've saved me a lot of hassle there because that this is our first one that's actually going to slot in above something else. So uh, this weird owl, uh, I think it's <laughs> Attack of the Weird Allosaurus. It's called. Yeah. Uh, season one, episode ten of uh, Guess Who uh, slots in nicely in third place between uh, the Phineas Verb Marvel and the Codename Kids Next Door. Lots yeah, nicely. I gotta be honest though. I don't think any of them's gonna beat the Ben Ten one for me. Cause he, like, as much as I love Scooby Doo and I love Scooby Doo, now it's gonna beat Ben Ten. Let's be honest. It is you. <laughs> I do love my Ben Ten. You do love your Ben Ten. Oh, uh, the thing that would beat is Dora. That's never gonna happen. <sighs> Not in this oh, series, mate. at least. <laughs> Next, second, second series two, by Dora. Every single Dora. Episode, you, heard right? it here first. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Every single Dora Explorer episode ranked. Yes. Fuck. <laughs>